Welcome. Or have y'all heard from Oliver at all? Um, no. No? <laughs> no. <laughs> Nobody, huh? Nobody's heard from him? No. All right, well, I think we can go ahead and get started. So welcome everybody to our very first trial of doing our uh, virtual workshop. Um, so I'll just go ahead and I'll introduce myself. So my name is Laura Harris. I'm the education coordinator um, over at Bike Easy. So I oversee our education programs and teach classes like this one. Um, so you know, under normal circumstances, we had been planning to offer the smart, our full smart biking class um, this past weekend. Obviously, we're not able to do that um, today. So we're trying to offer a virtual version of the classroom um, portion of the class. Um, just a little background information about the full smart biking class. This is something that is our kind of in-depth, uh, you know, normally a 10 hour long class partially in the classroom and partially on bike um, to give you kind of the full scope of everything you need to be able to, you know, equip yourself to ride uh, confidently on the road. This class is also the prerequisite for the league cycling um, instructor seminar. So if you are interested in becoming a league certified instructor, uh, being qualified, insured and certified to be able to teach um, bike safety classes such as this one, this is the prerequisite prerequisite class for that. Um, so please bear with me as we, we go through, like I said, this is our very first time um, trying to do this. Um, we have a couple other um, league certified instructors uh, here in the chat. So y'all feel free to chime in um, if you, you know, have any feedback. We're also gonna be using the chat feature. Um, so you should be able to access the chat feature. If you don't see how to access it from your screen, if you click, this is how it looks on my screen. If you click the three little dots where it says more, you're gonna see a button that says chat. Um, so I see David just said, hey everyone. So we're gonna try to use the chat feature. So if you, know, if you notice something's wrong, have a question, um, we're gonna try to use the chat feature uh, throughout our class today. So, Little housekeeping. Um, so I'm hoping everybody here RSVP'd. Um, they saw the invitation, whether it was on our Facebook event, email, blog post, um, however you heard about the, the class. Um, it'd be great if y'all could RSVP if you didn't already, just so we have your contacts so we can follow up with you later about more opportunities to get involved and to take classes. Um, we're gonna try to use good Zoom etiquette. So if you're not speaking at the moment, um, keep yourself muted. Um, and like we said, we're going to be using the chat to ask questions um, and things like that. Any questions about that right now? You don't want to try out using the chat? Great. So I'm going to try out, since we don't have too large of a group, I'm going to try to give everyone just a chance to speak for a moment um, and introduce yourselves. And I know Karen, you share, shared this out with people throughout the state, so I just kind of want to get an idea of who's here, um, where you're coming from, and what you want to learn um, out of this class. So maybe let me try by starting on um, calling on folks one at a time here. Let's see if I can. So let's start with Ashlyn. Would you like to introduce yourself? Can everybody hear me? Yep. yep. 
Okay, so my name is Ashlyn. I am out of Baton Rouge. I work for the Safety Place. So I actually run a bike and pedestrian safety program. Um, I actually heard about this through our coalition, um, Kenyatta Robertson. So thank y'all for extending the invite. Okay, uh, Aline, would you like to introduce yourself? Sure. I'm Aline Lespina. I'm the Program and Operations Manager for Bike Easy, uh, also a league certified instructor, instructor. And, you know, I'm kind of here uh, to take notes, learn a little more, take a refresher, and kind of get some feedback on how we can improve our virtual sessions. And I guess since John's here, he could introduce himself. Hi, I'm, I'm John. I'm also an LCI. I was reminding people the class is going on. <laughs> Good to see you. Awesome. Uh, Clark, would you like to introduce yourself? Uh, hello, I'm Clark Thompson. I'm, uh, I'm an LCI, but I could sure use a refresher. And uh, I'm from New Orleans, although we're currently evacuating or uh, quarantining, whatever it is we're doing <laughs> over in Waveland, Mississippi. So we're trying to bring the bike love to Waveland right now. Introduce me now. And my wife, Tony. So hello, I'm Tony. Um, Clark's been wanting me to take this class for a really long time. So I'm excited that it's virtual and the timing worked out and I'm glad to be here. Uh, Karina, would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Karina. I'm in New Orleans as well. Um, I was looking forward to taking this class in person. So glad you're, you're offering it online. This makes it uh, I was, I was sad we weren't gonna be able to do it, so thank you for that. And I'm just looking to refresh my old brain on uh, bike safety and on how to fix my bike, et cetera. Um, David, maybe we'll wait till everyone else introduces yourself and then you could talk about what you wanna talk about. Um, Eric, could you introduce yourself? Hi, my name is Eric. Uh, I sometimes do LCI with Bike Easy here, and I'm excited this class is happening. And I'm just gonna help out with uh, it a little bit through the chat feature and things like that. So yeah, thanks. Yeah, if y'all have any questions um, during this session while I'm talking, Eric's gonna be on hand to help respond to any questions you guys might have. Um, Karen, would you like to introduce yourself? Sure. I'm Karen Jones. I'm with the LSU Ag Center, and I've worked with Laura, you, you obviously, and uh, Lauren and Alina with um, some schools doing some bike safety, and they were a great success. It was fabulous. So I'm hoping maybe I might uh, try to be a league cycling instructor maybe <laughs> but uh yeah first steps but yeah i'd like to also just expand on what we were doing before because the kids were just loving it and um of course this school year is probably going to be a wash but maybe after um, next school year we could do it and i'm in jefferson parish so i teach in jefferson and i live in jefferson so um i can't cross lines, so I can't go into Orleans, but there's still lots to do in Jefferson, so I'm um, doing the work there. Glad to be here. Awesome. Les, would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, I'm Les. I'm an LCI. I uh, live in New Orleans as well. Um, I'm uh, sort of hoping to uh, see how this see how this online method of doing this works. Uh, it, it's it's a great opportunity, I think, to get to a, a lot of a lot more people and uh, just kind of checking it out. Oh, and Ashlyn, say hi to Kenyatta for me. Cool. Uh, hey, Matt, wanna introduce yourself? Hey, guys, I'm Matt. Uh, I'm in New Orleans, I live in the quarter. I actually just started biking, and uh, I told everybody I work with that. And uh, we're doing this Bike Easy Challenge in April. And so they send me a ton of resources, uh, including the link to these webinars to get some like beginner, beginners, riders tips. So I'm just soaking up everything I can. Awesome. And then uh, Tano, 
Tano, sorry. All right, I'm Tano. Uh, I live in Mid City, New Orleans. I've uh, kind of been wanting to get a little bit more involved in Bike Easy and LCI and all this uh, for a while. Uh, John and Aline brought me in. Uh, yeah, just kind of been wanting to do this uh, for a long time and kind of excited that I can finally make one of these classes. Awesome. Cool. Wow. Okay. This is working great so far. This is awesome. I'm super excited. Like you said, Les, you know, we're just trying to figure out how to make this work. And, you know, hopefully this is something we can continue uh, to offer um, and do better, uh, you know, for throughout the future. So let's get started. So um, before I talk about the league, I just want to talk kind of about what we're going to cover today. I'm going to switch it around slightly from what was posted, but today I want to cover more just Selecting your bike, fitting your bike, making sure your bike is safe to ride, and then all the gear, equipment, things like helmet, accessories um, you're going to want to have while you're riding. And tomorrow, I'll go into more uh, the, the principles of traffic law, rules of the road, um, and more specific handling of the bike. Um, so we'll see how we do today. Um, are all of y'all plant? Um, maybe raise your hand if you're planning on joining for tomorrow's session as well. Okay, cool. Um, so I just do, I do want to reiterate. So this class is a two session class. So today we're going to cover um, this topics I just mentioned. Tomorrow we're going to go into more of the specifics of, of the traffic law um, and how to navigate different kinds of intersections, um, things like that. And we are recording both of these sessions. So if you, you know, need to watch it later, you can do that um, as well. And hopefully we'll be offering it in the same form again. Um, and then if you do want to go on to, to complete this full smart biking class that will have an additional on bike session, which hopefully we'll be off, able to offer in the summer. Um, if you want to complete the full smart biking class, you can count these online courses if you complete both the sessions towards getting that smart um, biking certificate. Okay, so just a little bit about this curriculum that we're kind of taking from. This is from the League of American Bicyclists. Bicyclists. They've been around since 1880, um, and they're kind of the premier um, source for bike education information and advocacy. Um, you know, so as it says here, they've represented bicyclists in the movement to create safer roads, stronger communities, um, and bicycle-friendly America for everyone. They were actually some of the first people to advocate for paved roads. So if anyone ever says Roads are made for cars, it's not true. The league advocated for the first paved roads. Um, and, you know, they offer things like the Smart Cycling Program. They do their Bike Friendly American Program. They offer um, conferences like the National Bike Summit, which unfortunately I was hoping to go to and had to get canceled um, this year. And they do a lot of advocacy to advocate for better conditions for people um, on bikes throughout the United States. Um, and so also normally if we were meeting in person, I would give you guys all a copy of the Smart Cycling Manual, which is a really great resource from the league. Um, but since I am not able to do that, I am going to try my best to share with you the um, link to a PDF version of this. Okay. And then I'm going to share this. So this link, if you guys want to follow along on the PDF version, or if you want to print this out um, on your own, um, you can do that as well. from current slide <laughs> yeah <laughs> bear with me y'all <laughs> my first time okay 
Uh, and there's some other really great resources online from the league. Um, and if you ever stop by Vikizi's office when y'all are safe to do that, they have lots of great um, videos. I'm gonna try to share some of those videos throughout our class today. They make this nice little smart cycling quick guide. Some of y'all might be familiar with that. Lots of really great resources on the league website um, and on the Bike Easy um, website as well. So definitely check that out and explore all the resources that are online. Um, so this is kind of the basics that we're gonna be talking about today. We're gonna be talking mostly about the bicycle, basic um, maintenance and some of the clothing and equipment you might, you might want while you're riding. And then tomorrow we're gonna go into more of, um, as I said, traffic law, bike handling, hazards um, and avoidance. So let's talk about choosing your bike. Um, so if you want to get a bike, it really depends on how much you want to spend, where you're going to be riding, and what do you want to use your bike for. So let's, I'm going to experiment with trying to play a video for y'all. One second. It's important to find a bike that meets your needs and your budget. Your budget will determine the quality of your bike and its components. To buy a bike, determine what kind of riding you are going to be doing and where you're going to be doing it. The answers to these two questions will lead you to your new bike. If you are mainly riding on the road and your focus is speed, look for a road bike with dropped handlebars and skinny tires. Mountain bikes are designed to give a comfortable ride on rough terrain. They have flat handlebars and flat tires. Many also have suspension. Hybrid bikes are perfect for paved trails and city riding. There are a mix of mountain and road bikes with an upright ride and narrower tires. There are a lot of other bikes designed for specialty uses from BMX bikes to tandem bikes and recumbents. Your local bike shop will have more information. The League of American Bicyclists, creating better bike education for everyone. So basically, your, um, the bike here you're riding really just depends on what kind of riding you want to be doing. And let me get back to, so there's different types of bikes. I am going to switch back to our PowerPoint here. Depending on the kind of riding you want to be doing. So if you're going to be riding on the road, or you're going to be going on a long bike tour, um, you want to commute to work. Or do you want a little assistance with uh, e-assist bike? Um, there's recumbent bikes, uh, tandem bikes, folding bikes. Um, it just kind of depends on the riding that you want to be doing um, to find the right kind of bike for you. Um, and I just realized I forgot to introduce one person uh, in our group here. So I'm going to backtrack a little bit. Um, David, could you introduce yourself? David's going to talk a little bit about uh, the Bike Easy Challenge, um, and maybe that's how some of y'all are involved. So I'm gonna, sorry, I'm gonna backtrack a little bit and introduce uh, David here as well. Yeah, no problem. Um, hi everybody, my name's David. Um, I'm the Community Programs Coordinator for Bike Easy. Um, I'm also an LCI, uh, and I just wanted to shamelessly plug, um, thank you Matt for bringing it up earlier, but, um, Starting in April, which is Wednesday, we're doing the Bike Easy April Challenge. Uh, let me see. I, uh, Laura, do you mind uh, stopping sharing your screen for a second, and I can share mine quickly? Um, <clears throat> but so for everybody that may not be aware, the Bike Easy April Challenge is a um, 
free event or free basically encouragement event for all of April. Um, we hold this event uh, virtually through the Love to Ride platform. And just like some history, it all started with Bike to Work Day in 2011 um, in New Orleans. And then it expanded from there in 2017. We started working with Love to Ride. Um, and since 2017, we've had 3,000 riders and 250 organizations. Um, and this year we're looking for uh, 1,250 individuals, 125 new riders, which we're already halfway to that point right now, and 100 organizations or champions. Um, and organizations and champions are what Matt referenced earlier when he was saying that somebody at his workplace was sending out information and, um, from, you know, like materials letting him know about um, this class and some of the other things Bike Easy has coming on. So if you guys are interested, I know um, Clark's on the call. I know he's um, one of our great champions for Audubon Charter School. Um, and, you know, just to make it clear, everybody can um, participate in the Bike Easy April Challenge, um, even though it started with Bike to Work. And obviously, you know, with COVID-19 going on, we're not encouraging anybody to bike to work unless you're an essential employee or an essential worker. Um, but with all of this um, individual riding and riding with those that you're quarantined with is still um encouraged and we're still encouraging that throughout so we're just basically moving it all to the virtual platform normally we'd be out at a bunch of different public events and trying to like promote people and make public touches but at this point it's really all about being online um once you interact with the love to ride uh website you'll see that you can like see people in your community and you can start like individual groups or see people that are in your workplace um just like stay up to date with everybody and send them encouraging high fives and stuff um and then these are all the different apps you can sync uh love to ride strava map my fitness and endo mundo so it like automatically records it or on the love to ride app or website you can just manually enter in information um, and we got a bunch of social media assets out there right now. So, you know, just really asking you guys to um, help boost the signal a little bit and sign up if you haven't already. Um, you can find like all these various resources online on Love to Rise website. And then these are some of the prizes that we have to offer that um, you guys can all get your hands on. And then besides that, you can either go to our website or Love to Ride dot net to uh, get some more information um, but I'll just um, throw it back over to Laura so she can cover more of this but if you guys got any questions about the um, challenge specifically feel free to drop them in the chat and thank you Eric for already putting the link in there thank you Laura thank you David okay all right so yeah, everyone sign up for the Bike Easy Challenge. Just, uh, lots of great solo riding opportunities out there. I just wrote hey, Laura, I'm sorry to interrupt. I, there's one thing that we forgot to add on our presentation that I just thought about is uh, anybody who's riding indoors, if you have like a static bike, that can be counted for the challenge in the past. We didn't count that, but you know, considering the the uh, COVID-19 uh, happening right now, if you are riding indoors, you can log those miles uh, manually on the ride. Awesome. Cool. All right, so we're gonna go back a little bit to selecting the bike for you um, and how you wanna fit the bike to you once you've selected your bike. So there are lots of different kinds of bikes. Um, you know, if you're following along on the PDF as well on the uh, Smart Cycling Manual, there's a lot of good information on there. Um, you know, things you want to be looking for are, you know, what kind of frame do you want? Um, you want it to be strong but light. Um, there's different kinds of materials, steel, aluminum, titanium, carbon fiber, 
um, different kinds of wheels. There's aluminum ribs, rims, uh, stainless steel spokes. Um, there's different kind of brakes. You know, most road bikes you're gonna have hand brakes, but if some people, maybe you want a beach cruiser style where you're pedaling backward, coaster brake. Um, but you want to make sure whatever kind of brakes you have, they're going to stop enough for you to stop quickly and they're easy to use. Um, different kinds of shifters as well. Um, you want to make sure whatever kind of shifters you have are responsive, easy for you to use. But if you run away to one speed, single speed beach cruiser in New Orleans, that's totally okay too. Um, saddle, all different kinds of saddles, you know, depending on your body type, what kind of riding you're going to be doing. Um, you know, so there's, if you want to be doing more upright, there's a saddle that's shaped for that. If you're going to be leaning over, doing road riding, there's a saddle for that too. Um, so you can research different saddles that feel comfortable for you. There's um, all different materials. Um, the key is you want your, your bike to never be hurting you. So you want it always to be comfortable um, and easy for you to use. Um, so again, different types of bikes, road bikes, um, you're going to see a lot of people in New Orleans riding road bikes, they're built for riding on paved roads. Um, they can use them to race, to tour, but also just to commute or have fun. Um, you can carry cargo on road bikes if you set your bike up um, appropriately. Some people like to ride mountain bikes here in New Orleans, you know, we have rough roads, lots of uh, potholes, so those thicker tires uh, can be more conducive to feeling a little bit less of all the jarring bumps on the road. Um, and they have a flat or slightly curved up handlebars, um, more of a heads up riding position, larger, lower pressure tires, uh, and kind of a wide range of gears. Um, and they can be as light a, as road bikes, but they're designed more for riding on, on unpaved roads. Um, and then there's also what's called a hybrid or a comfort bike. Um, those are really great for getting around the city. Uh, generally more stable, more comfortable than a road bike. Um, they tend to be more efficient on paved roads than a mountain bike because they have narrower um, tires. So you're able to go a little bit faster. Um, not as capable of handling the off-road conditions, but can handle unpaved um, roads as well. Um, and there's also recumbent bikes, so those are going to place the rider in more of a reclined position. Um, they come in different styles. They're primarily for road riding. Um, there's also tandem bikes, bicycle built for two, so they're extra fun and pretty cute um, as well. Um, so all different kinds of bikes depending on the riding that you want to be doing. So once you've selected a bike based um, on the kind of riding you want to be doing, you want to make sure that your bike fits. Um, like I said, you never want your bike to hurt when you're riding. That's going to be a huge barrier um, to riding. Um, so I'm going to try to more swiftly pull up a little league video to demonstrate um, kind of a, how do you make sure your bike is going to fit properly here. It's important to make sure your bike fits you properly. While your seat can be adjusted, frames have fixed dimensions, so be sure to find the right size frame for you. If the frame has a full top tube, straddle the bike and stand in front of the seat. If it is a road bike, there should be one to two inches of clearance between you and the bike. For a mountain or hybrid bike, there should be three to four inches. For step through bikes or bikes with a slanting top tube, test the frame by pushing one pedal all the way down while sitting on the seat. Your knee should have a slight bend in it. The seat post can be adjusted, but should be in the middle of the range, not fully extended or touching the frame. Regardless of your frame size, this test will also make sure your seat is at the right height for a comfortable ride. Tip, mark your seat height with a permanent marker. So if someone borrows your bike, you can easily move your seat post back to your ideal position. The League of American Bicyclists, creating better bike education for everyone. Cool. 
So like I said, you want to be able to straddle your bike with about two inches between the body of your, uh, your body and the frame of the bike. If you have a top bar that goes straight across about three or four inches, if it's a mountain bike, you know, you don't want your bike to be too tall. It's going to hurt you. If your bike is too small, it's going to be like, you know, you're riding a clown bike. Um, making sure your seat height is really crucial. A lot of people experience knee pain when they're riding. Um, and that's usually very easily remedied with an adjustment to your saddle height. Um, if you're just kind of eyeballing it, usually a good rule of thumb is you kind of want it to be about the height of your hip. Um, and when you're pedaling, you want to have almost a full extension of your leg while you're pedaling. You just want to have a slight bend in your knee as you're pedaling. Um, and that's going to help you have a more efficient uh, ride. Um, here's a little diagram of some of the parts of the bike for reference here. Um, so again, your saddle height should be high enough. There's a slight bend in your knee because you want to get that full extension. That's going to help give you that, that good forward motion. And you want your front knee uh, to be above the center of the pedal. Um, and your saddle should be, should be level. Um, some people like to angle it. You know, you can do what's comfor comfortable for you, but you can adjust it up or down. You can adjust it by the angle and you can also move it forwards and backwards. Um, so you want it to be the most comfortable for you. Also adjustable are the handlebars and the stem on your bike. Um, there's different kinds of handlebars. There are uh, drop bars or people call them bullhorns where you're kind of in the position where you're leaning forward. Um, there's handlebars that are straight across. There's mustache style handlebars, all different kinds of handlebars. Again, you, it depends on the kind of riding you wanna be doing um, and what's comfortable for you. Um, and you should adjust so you have just a slight bend um, in your elbow. Um, do we have any questions about bike selection or bike fit before we move on? Okay, so let's talk about once you have your bike selected and you, you know, make sure it fits you, you want to make sure that your bike is safe to ride. Um, so we do what's called the ABC Quick Check. This is something you can do every single time you get on your bike. Um, but, you know, especially if your bike's been sitting out in a backyard or sitting in your garage for years and getting dusty and rusty, um, you should definitely do this to make sure your bike is safe to ride. Um, and this is going to prevent you from having crashes. You know, you bet you want to diagnose any problems on your bike before you ride rather than having a breakdown in the middle of the road and potentially getting in a really unsafe situation. So this is the ABC quick check. So we have A is for air. Um, so we always want to make sure our tires are fully inflated on your bike. So with our bikes, pull my bike up here. Alright, everyone can see my wheels here. So we want to make sure you should be able to feel if your tire is fully inflated. If you know what it feels like, if you have road bike tires like mine, it should feel kind of how a fully inflated basketball might feel. Um, and if you have a pump with a gauge like this one, you can actually match what's called the PSI, it stands for pounds per, pounds per square inch, and that's actually going to be labeled somewhere on your tire. It's going to have a suggested PSI. And so when you're pumping up your tires, you can actually match the PSI that's labeled on your tire to the gauge on your pump. So that way you can know that it's fully inflated. Um, you always wanna ride with fully inflated tires. Um, if you ride with tires that are um, kind of low pressure, you're gonna be more likely to get what you call a pinch flat. Um, and it's gonna be a lot harder for you to ride. Um, and never ride a bike that has a flat tire, you're just gonna destroy your rims uh, by doing that. So you always wanna make sure your tire is fully inflated. Uh, it's just gonna be easier for you uh, when you're riding. So that's A for air. And then we have B is for brakes. Um, like we said, whatever kind of brakes you have, if you have hand brakes or coaster back pedal brakes, um, you wanna make sure that they're functioning. Um, so if you have handlebar brakes and you 
pull them in and they're going all the way and touching your handlebars, that means they're too loose. Um, you want to have about a thumb's width in between the end of that handlebar lever and um, your handlebars, right? Or your brake leather lever and your handlebars. Um, so if your brakes are too loose, you shouldn't be riding because you need to be able to stop in case of emergency. Um, so you always want to have functioning brakes. If you have a back fellow brake, make sure you can stop efficiently. Um, and you know, we're going to talk a little bit more about this when we talk about bike handling, but when we're braking, we want to be able to use, we have hand brakes, we want to use both those brakes um, for that full stop. And if you guys stick with us um, to when we are able to offer the on bike portion of the class, we're going to actually try out different styles of using your front brake, your back brake, both your brakes to feel the difference in that kind of um, stopping power with your brakes. So always make sure your brakes are working. Don't use your feet to stop, you'll destroy your shoes and you're not gonna stop very efficiently. So that's B for brakes. So, and then we have C and that's for your chain, um, your crank and your cassette, that whole sort of um, mechanism. And so for your chain, you always want to make sure your chain is on tight. Um, sometimes people's chain is falling off all the time. Uh, a lot of times that might indicate that your back wheel isn't pulled back all the way. You want to make sure that chain is taut. It's not too loose, so it's going to fall off. Um, you want to make sure it's not rusty. And you can use something like this. This is TriFlow. It's a lubricant. Um, so like I said, if your bike has been sitting in your backyard for years, it's super rusty. You definitely want to make sure it's lubed up before you take it um, out for a ride. So um, you can get something like this any hardware store, bike shop for a few bucks. Um, never use something like uh, WD-40 because that's actually corrosive. It will mess up your chain. Um, so you never want just rusty metal hitting metal. You want all that to be lubricated so that whole mechanism can work smoothly. Um, and when we I'll talk a little bit more about this and actually show you guys how to apply this to your chain. Um, and so that's the A, B, and C. And then quick, the quick part of the quick check is for a quick release. So a quick release on your bike. Let's see. You all see this little lever right here? You are gonna see that? So I could just pop this open and my wheel can just come right off. So, let me show you all how that works. Hmm. So now it's getting loose. And then I will undo my brakes. And then I will be able to just sort of Quickly, quickly release my wheel. And that's really great if you, you know, want to throw your bike onto the back of a car or need to, you know, squeeze it in somewhere where you can't fit the whole bike and if you just, or if you want to take off your wheel to fix the flat tire. You can just undo that really easily, but one time I didn't tighten my wheel all the way again after I had taken my wheel off to put it in the back of a car. I was riding, I took a sharp turn and my wheel fell out from under me. So the reason this quick is part of the ABC quick check is you want to make sure that those quick releases are always tightened all the way. Okay, so you want it to be really hard. You want to tighten it like this and then you want it to be really hard for you to um, press it down because you want to make sure it's really tight. And even if you don't have quick release, if you just have um, a bolt that you need to tighten with a wrench, you want to make sure that's tight. So make sure both your wheels are not going to come off when you're riding. Um, also, sometimes seats have quick releases, so mm -hmm. just make sure all those are tightened up um, all the way. Up. And then the check part of this is you just want to do a general check over your bike. You can lift it, bounce it up and down, make sure nothing's going to fall off. Go for a little bit of a test ride around the block if you're about to go for a long ride. Um, just make sure that everything is tight. Nothing's going to fall off the bike. Um, this is something you can do every time you ride. Um, and it's going to prevent you from having some bigger issues later on if you do this every time as well. 
Anybody want to add anything to that or any questions? And then I just wanted to show you guys a little bit more about the maintenance of your chain and your drive frame. So if you want to make sure your bike is properly lubricated, your chain is properly lubricated, you can take your tri-flow and it's going to have this little tip and you're going to actually hold it up and that's, it fits just perfectly between the links of your chain. So you can hold it onto your chain while you're pedaling and just make sure it gets in there and all the chain links like this. Can everyone see? So you're gonna just go around like this all the way. Another thing you can do while you're doing this is to actually switch your gears if you have multiple gears on your bike and make sure it kind of gets up all up in this whole mechanism. Um, and that's that way you know it's sort of uh, properly lubricated. And then you can take a cloth, wipe off any excess um, you don't want to make it too oily and attract too much dirt. So just kind of give it a little wipe down after you apply. So doing this is going to allow for smooth shifting. If your bike's making a lot of bad noises when you're trying to shift, might need might mean you need to um, take a little bit of a look at that. And probably a good idea to replace your chain every 1,500 to 2,000 miles. So if you're doing a lot of riding, it's going to wear down the teeth. Um, and so you might want to replace your chain because if it's, you're just going to keep causing more damage if you're riding on it um, when it's in a poor condition. All right, so we'll go into what you want to wear when you're riding. Um, consider riding in your everyday clothes. I'm an advocate of wearing, you know, really like whatever you want to wear when you ride a bike. But really important things to keep in mind is that you don't want to have anything loose, flowing, any straps, shoelaces untied. When we work with kids on bikes, they constantly don't tie their shoes and they get their shoelaces caught up in the chain. One time I had this like long flowy dress and it got caught in my chain. And then, so not only did I have to rip my dress, I was literally attached to my bike and I was awkwardly like pulling it out in the middle of the road. So you can wear whatever you want, but just make sure that everything is tied up to a point where it's not gonna get caught in your chain. Make sure your shoelaces, backpack straps, anything you're carrying, bags, whatever, are not gonna be caught up in your bike. Um, anything in your basket that's going to hang down and get caught in there, just check all that stuff. Make sure nothing's going to fall off. Um, and you can use a leg band to keep your pants clean. So there are things like this. This one is actually reflective, so extra double duty here. Um, and you can actually put these around your pants leg. So if you have, you know, not super tight pants on and you're worried about getting bike grease on your pants, you know, if you're commuting to your office job, you want to keep your pants looking clean, you can actually use something like this to keep your pants tight um, and keep them from, from hitting anything that's going to get bike grease um, on, your, on your clothes there. Um, and when you're riding in the cold weather, you know, of course, you can wear layers. It's, in New Orleans, we're about to be in the really rainy season, and you never know when it's going to rain. Sometimes it feels good to ride in the rain, but uh, if you don't want to get soaking wet, it's a good idea to just throw like a lightweight poncho or something like that um, in your bag. I know, John, you have like a really cool bike-specific poncho that actually attaches to your handlebars. Um, so there's all kinds of cool clothing made specifically for cycling. And of course, um, the more reflective and visible you are with that kind of clothing, especially for night riding, um, the better you're going to be. Um, so other equipment you might want on your bike, 
most important is the bike lock, um, but we're, I'm going to talk a little bit more about that in a minute. I'm going to give you guys a little visual on how to best lock. But um, for carrying systems, you can see here, um, these people have like stylish and easy ways to carry things on their bike. You can have a simple rack, um, like the lady has here, you can strap things onto it. I have a rack where I have a simple milk crate put onto the rack attached there. I can carry all kinds of stuff that way. It's really nice for me to not wear a backpack while I'm riding, especially when it's hot out, I don't get as sweaty and it doesn't hurt my back as much. So having a bike basket, I really love. I would recommend having some kind of carrying system if you want. You can use pannier bags like in the picture um, on the right. And so those can be in the front, they can be in the back. You can actually carry so much stuff on your bike if, you, if you're interested, you know, if you wanna go on a long distance bike tour. I did a two month bike ride one time and I put my tent, my sleeping bag, clothes, everything I needed for two months was on my bike. Um, so, you know, people are like, oh, I wanna just go by bike, but how do I carry groceries? There's actually really cool systems that you can set up to actually carry quite a lot of, of stuff on your bike. There's actually now a bicycle moving company um, in New Orleans and you can get bike trailers, um, baskets, all different kinds of things to carry actually quite a lot of gear um, on your bike. And then lights and reflectors, we'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. So let's go on to bike parking and locking your bike. Um, my bike seat actually got stolen last night, so that's why I didn't use my own bike to show you how to fit your saddle because I don't have one. So good lesson, uh, especially right now in New Orleans, you really want to make sure your bike's locked up properly, including your saddle, your wheels, and especially your frame. Um, so this is a nice little diagram of, you know, how to best lock your bike. Um, have you all ever seen maybe just a bike wheel locked to nothing? And there's no other part of the bike attached to it. That's a situation where someone locks only the wheel of their bike to that post or bike rack. Um, so at minimum, you want to lock up your frame. That's the most important part of the bike, right? So in this diagram, you see they've locked not only the frame, but also their front wheel to that post or to that bike rack. Um, and for additional security, you can actually loop an extra cable lock up both your wheels as well as the frame to that bike rack. Um, you can also get an additional uh, little cable to lock your saddle. So what happened to me won't happen to you. You can actually lock up your saddle um, as well. So if you want to really, if you really care about your bike, I would recommend locking up your wheels, your frame and your saddle as much as you can. Um, Ideally, you can, your back wheel is actually worth more than your front wheel because of all the gears on there. So ideally, you would want to lock up your back wheel connected to your frame, to that post or that bike rack. Um, there's all different kinds of good locks out there today. Um, U-lock is kind of the standard high quality lock. If you just have a, a flimsy little cable lock, that's not, it's just not going to cut it in New Orleans. Um, I like it. Stand, this is pretty standard kind of U-lock. Um, this one's good because you can get around the wheel and the frame. Um, I like combination locks because I tend to lose my keys and then I have to get somebody of an uh, angle grinder to cut my lock off. Combination lock, you can set it to whatever combination you want. You don't have to worry about losing your keys. Um, but if you prefer to have a key system, that's cool as well. Um, and there's other kinds of pretty strong bike locks out there. Um, but a U look like this is pretty much uh, a standard that you want to go for. Um, and make sure when you're parking your bike, your, your bike, you're being respectful. Um, don't lock it up in like a handicap uh, ramp or don't lock it in front of the doorway to a business. Um, try to use bike parking if it's available or lock it up uh, somewhere that's not going to be in the way. Um, probably you, it might be better to lock it up in a more visible location. More eyes on it means less likely it's going to be stolen. Um, David, I saw you made a comment on one of the stolen bikes post earlier. You know, if you are locking your bike next to somewhere where you see a bike that's been stripped down to the frame, means probably someone's watching that area, maybe stealing bikes from that area, 
Um, so just think about that, be extra conscious about where you're leaving your bike. Try to bring it in uh, inside at night, um, especially kind of in, in some areas where it might be more likely to get stolen. Um, you can actually register. It's no longer a requirement in New Orleans that you need to get your bike registered with the NOPD. The system just wasn't really working and it was kind of being used to unfairly target people. So you don't actually have to have your bike registered, but it's a really good idea to register your bike um, on a website called Bike Index. Um, and you can register your serial number there and it can be really useful if your bike does get stolen. Um, it's possible for it to be recovered that way. Um, Laura, I think uh, Ashlyn uh, raised her hand on chat. Okay. Any other question? Or maybe she just... Uh, it was probably an accident. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, that's all good. <laughs> um, I also wanted to just interject really quickly. It looks like, you know, we've had a pretty lively chat about it but definitely you commented on it, um, but locking that rear triangle, including the rear wheel, is definitely what you wanna do. Um, we should probably all actually talk to our friends at the league to make sure they like update this imagery. Um, but yeah, uh, Clark dropped in the comments uh, a picture of correctly locking through the rear triangle for anybody that's interested. Yes, cool. I'm just catching up on all the, the chats here. Cool. Thanks for everyone for chiming in. A lot of this is really great information. I'll say, like from those images there, if there's nothing on top, and I have seen people lock like that before, where they're just like locking to like a waist high bar that, you know, the lock literally slips right off over when you lift the bike up. So you always want to make sure it's like secured down and, um, something on top of it so it can't just be lifted over definitely yeah some some bike racks are not actually attached to the ground you can just pull it pull it away with you um so you know and a lot of a lot of companies and businesses are offering secure bike parking now um more and more um and D david's a great person to reach out to if you um you know if you work for a business or a company that or you are interested in having some bike parking installed um, that's something that we can actually help you out kind of figure out what can work best for your company um, or organization so hopefully we'll be seeing more and more secure uh, bike parking around around New Orleans Um, and as we said, we have visible, secure locations, always better, more eyes on the street, safer for everybody, um, near the front entrance of the building. Um, yeah, and as we said, request bike parking as if there isn't any because bikes need a place to park too. So in addition to a lock, carrying system, all that other stuff, another really important thing you want to have when you're riding is a bike helmet. So let me see if I can demonstrate how to best put on a helmet. So there's all kinds of really cool helmets. I actually got this one recently. I think it's pretty stylish. So there's all kinds of cool helmets you can get these days that um, are look neat and are gonna keep your head safe. So you wanna make sure that with your helmet, we, do, we can do something called the eyes, ears, and mouth test. So let me, Tighten it up here. Um, and this company actually, they're called Thousand and they're, I just saw they're actually giving away free um, bike helmets to bike couriers right now. So if anyone, um, you know, knows any bike couriers around that need a free bike helmet, this is a really good um, company that's doing them. You just have to email them and tell them you want a free bike helmet. So that's pretty cool. So you want to have about, you want to make sure that's straight across your head um, and you want to have about two fingers width between your eyebrows and the helmet and you want to have this nice Y shape or triangle shape, um, you know, on your side of your ear and if you, you know, less than a half inch between your chin 
and the strap. So the eyes, ears, and your mouth test, that means with your eyes, you should just be able to see the top of the helmet here. Um, and the ears, it's gonna form that nice triangle shape. And with my mouth, if I open my mouth all the way, it's gonna pull it a little bit towards my head. You know, you don't want it to be choking, but you want it to be tight enough that, you know, if I push it around, it's not gonna expose my forehead or the back of my head. Um, and this one's actually pretty cool. It has a magnetic locking, so you can actually just clip it with one hand. And it also has um, this nifty little pop-out hole here. And you can actually slide your U-lock through it when you're locking up your, your bike, so that way you can actually just lock up your helmet um, with your bike, so you don't have to carry your helmet in and worry about it getting it stolen, getting it stolen as well. Um, so there's all different kinds of helmets you can get today ones that even look kind of cool. Um, so it's definitely a good idea to wear a helmet because you really want to protect your brain. You know, if you just have one bad crash, that could be it. Um, so always a good idea to wear a helmet if you're riding. It's not, it's not the law to wear a helmet if you're an adult in New Orleans, um, but always a very good idea. Any questions about helmet or helmet fit? Um, another, another thing about helmets is that they do expire over time. So if your helmet has been, you know, sitting around in a garage for 15 years, it does expire. Um, the material gets brittle and can crack and break. Um, so if your helmet is very old or if it's been in a crash before, you need to replace that helmet um, and get a new helmet. Um, and another thing about helmets is, you know, if you buy a $300 helmet versus a cheaper helmet at Walmart, they're all certified to do the same thing. Um, so, you know, even if you get a cheap helmet, it's still going to be able to protect your head. Any questions about, about helmet? If, yeah, I mean, if you, if you just drop it, I think it's like only if you've been in it, I think if you drop it, it's not a good idea to drop it. It should be okay. Um, but if you've been in a real crash with your helmet, you should replace the helmet because it could be cracked. Anyone else want to chime in on that? Okay. I'll just say uh, it doesn't necessarily need to be high speed crashes, you know, that, that may cause problems. I was uh, going about eight miles an hour approaching a rest stop, fell off my bike because uh, the, uh, the planks on the bridge I was crossing were parallel to the direction of travel and went face first. And the nail that would have gone through my head went through the helmet instead. So, you know, not, I mean, even if you're riding in your neighborhood, that kind of stuff can happen. So please, please wear a helmet. <laughs> mm -hmm. Definitely. Oh, one other, one other, um, another gear thing that I want to mention is having a bell. It is actually a law that you need to have a bell on your bike. This one was a Mardi Gras throw because I love muses on it. Um, so you, just like in a car, you know, you need to have some kind of noise making device, so a bell or a horn. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about riding on paths tomorrow. Um, but having a bell is really useful if you're coming up on a group of pedestrians in a shared path and you want to let them know you're coming. It's good etiquette um, and safer for everyone if you use a bell or some kind of noise making device on your bike. And it is actually in the law that you need to have one. Um, so riding in inclement weather, definitely gonna be a reality if you're a bike rider here in New Orleans. You never know when it's gonna start thunderstorming or hurricaning or hailing. Um, so you wanna, just like I said, be prepared for that, having just sort of a poncho. Um, be aware that when you're riding in inclement weather, the streets are gonna be a lot more slick. It's gonna, you're not gonna be able to brake as efficiently. Um, so just be extra cautious. And also the visibility is gonna be a lot lower um, in, in inclement weather or, or poor uh, conditions. Um, also similarly, if you're riding at, at dusk, dawn, when you're kind of transitioning from that dark to light or light to dark time, the, the visibility is going to be a lot lower, so you're going to want to be extra cautious um, in those situations. Okay, and this is actually going to be the last topic we're going to talk about today, um, and then we'll have time for any questions y'all have. 
So night writing. Um, so similar to having a bell, it is actually the law that when you're riding, you need to have lights on your bike. So just like you would have um, in an automobile, you want to have a white light in the front and a red light in the back, just like in a car. Um, and it is actually the law. So, you know, the more, the more visible that you are on your bike, the better. You can't have too many lights. Um, there's all kinds of cool uh, lights you can get too. So y'all probably seen some of the big night ride groups that go out and they have all the, the lights and their spokes and flashy things. And, you know, there's all kinds of cool lights you can get. The more visible you are, the better. Um, in addition to lights, you should have reflectors. Also part of the law as well. You need to have reflectors in your bike visible from the back, from the front, and from the side. Um, the more visible you are, the better. So if you're going out riding, no lights, dark clothing, it's gonna be really hard for people to see you. As someone who rides a bike and drives a car, you know, I know that when I'm driving, it's really hard to see people, even if you are trying to be conscious um, and look out for those people. So really the more visible um, you are, the better. Um, these are some of the lights that Bike Easy has been doing some bike light giveaways recently, which I'm really excited about. Um, and these, these, there's all different kinds of lights. Like I said, some take regular batteries, um, like double A's, triple A's. These are cool because they're actually USB rechargeable. So just like how you would charge your cell phone, you can charge up these lights and they come on and off really easily. These ones I can just clip around my handlebar and my seat post in the back, different settings. Um, depending on you know what kind of riding you're doing as well and a lot of people like to ride um, even in the daytime with lights um, good idea to ride but it is actually a law in the nighttime um, that you need to have lights when you're riding um, and it is actually you know a ticketable offense so the more visible you are um, definitely the better you know I used to ride without lights and now I feel like so unsafe when I go out uh, without lights so definitely want to have at minimum that red light in the back um, and the white light in the front. Anyone want to add anything, any thoughts to that? Cool. And then I also mentioned a couple other things you might want to have when you're out riding. Um, oh yeah, lights get stolen a lot, John. Yes, you're absolutely right. That's another thing. So these ones, like I said, these come off and on really easily. Um, so one thing you might want to do is, is just if you know if you're going, even if you're going into the grocery store for a few minutes, if you don't want your lights to get stolen, you can just pop them off, put them in your bag or your pocket, and then put them back on. Um, sometimes it can be annoying to take them on and off, but they will get stolen. Um, and they get stolen a lot here. So lights that are either very hard to steal or very easy for you to take off um, is always a good idea. Um, you can get lights like this. Any bike shop, hardware store um, should have lights like this. And hopefully once we can be seeing each other again in public, um, we'll be doing a few more bike light giveaways uh, as well. Um, and then one, another thing I wanna mention that's a really good idea to have when you're riding is um, a patch kit. And then, uh, so, and tire levers and maybe even a hand pump, um, especially if you're going on a longer distance ride. If you have these things and basic multi-tool, um, Allen wrench or a wrench if you need a wrench to take the wheel off your bike if you don't have quick release. If you have some of those basic tools, you might be able to actually fix any um, problems you might encounter um, right then and there and not have to worry about you know walking your bike miles to go home or taking it to a bike shop. You can actually fix it yourself. So um, we're actually going to be doing a maintenance workshop on Saturday um, where we're going to cover, you know, do as best as we can virtually covering um, flat fixing. Um, but today I'll just kind of go over this briefly with you all and just show you what you might find inside of a patch kit. So in this one, so we're going to have tire levers. Comments, you know, slightly different sizes, colors, materials, um, but you will use these to pry the tire off of your rim. Inside the patch kit, 
you're gonna find, um, this is what is technically called vulcanizing fluid. It's rubber cement. You can't just use regular super glue. That's not gonna work. You need this vulcanizing fluid. And then your patches. Your patches will come in different shapes and sizes that you can use depending on the size of the hole that you need to fix. Um, and you know, all these have instructions labeled on the patch, the patch kit as well. So if you have a patch kit, and a pump with you. If you're out riding, if you're out in the country, you get a flat. If you have this stuff with you, you can actually fix your own um, bike right then and there, not have to worry about taking to your shop, save yourself a lot of time um, and money. A lot of times people like to ride with an extra tube. So like you said, like we said earlier, you know, not only is that um, PSI labeled on the tire of your, your bike, also on the tire is labeled that size of the tire. Similarly, the tube is labeled with its size. So know what size tube um, and tire you have, and that way you can go into a bike shop and you say, uh, I need a tube that's 26 by one and three eighths. Um, and that way you can you know, you know the tube size that you need to replace with. So another thing you can do if you're going on a long distance bike ride or any bike ride is carry a spare tube in the right size, and that way you can just use your tire levers to replace the tube and then you can go home and patch it later if you don't want to do your patching on the side of the road. Um, and there's even uh, glueless patches, those work okay too, um, whatever you prefer to use, but that's another really good thing to have handy um, when you're riding. And also water. Water is a really great thing to have when you're, when you're riding as well. Um, any, other, any other tips anyone wants to share as far as equipment or, or things to have while you're riding? Cool. A little handheld pump comes in handy. Yeah. Yeah, a little handheld pump like this. Um, oh, and one thing also I should mention about inflating your tires and pumping them up is that there's actually different kinds of valves. Um, so on my bike, I actually have what's called a Presta valve. And you're going to see these more on road bike tires. It's going to be the skinnier valve type. Um, but a lot of more traditional older bikes um, or mountain bikes might have uh, what's called a Schrader valve. Um, it's going to be the same kind of valve you would see on a, a car tire. It's going to be the wider valve style. Um, so just make sure that your pump can either, if you have Presta, make sure your pump can accommodate that skinnier valve type. No, make sure you can understand how to use it, how to put the pump on. Um, and they do actually make little adapters that you can get at a bike shop for a few dollars that you can put onto your Presta valve um, to uh, make it as an adapter that you can use a Schrader design pump. Um, and I like to ride with those just attached to my Presta valve so that way if I can't get a Presta pump, I can still pump up my bike tire. Awesome. So with that, I would love to take any questions, if anyone has any questions about some of the things we covered today. Um, and I'm also gonna send y'all a link to a feedback survey so we can, you know, try to, you know, make sure we can address your questions next time we do this, make sure things run more smoothly. Um, and I hope everyone can join us tomorrow so tomorrow we are going to cover, as I said, rules of the road, the principles of traffic law, some tips for, for bike handling, how to handle different kinds of traffic situation, um, different hazards and how to avoid them, how to position yourself at different inter intersections, um, and all that fun stuff. Um, so thank you guys so much for joining me. Um, and I'll open up to questions and I will send you all the survey link. I wanted to add, especially I've seen a lot of people in the uh, chat right now that have been writing for a while and maybe some new people I didn't know before, it would be useful for us to know uh, what, if you learn something that you didn't know before, even if you've been writing for a while, like when you are giving your feedback, this is useful for us to see how uh, these classes can keep going. Um, yeah, so I don't have a question, but I do have two bits to add in. Um, first off, um, with regard to the uh, Bike Easy Challenge and the love to ride, like David said, I've, uh, 
I've been doing this with the kit with the schools for a while now and I'm getting a lot of faculty involved and a lot of parents involved through that. And, um, and I wanted to go and kind of let y'all know, um, let you know my secrets. Um, you know, since y'all are all here, let y'all know on the secrets of how the thing works, how the scoring works. Um, so you can win the thing. Um, it's uh, it's a game theory thing. So I could I ride all the time. So from if I go out and ride a hundred miles, I get a few points. If you go and convince somebody, and right now is like the perfect time to convince somebody that hasn't been riding and they haven't ridden since they were teens. And if you get them on a bike, you get more points for your group than if I go out and ride a hundred miles. If they go out and r ride five. So that's really a key point there, that if you can go out and you can reach out to five of your friends that are sitting at home and haven't ridden a bike in years, and you get their butt on a bike, you're gonna score a ton of points for your team. So um, that's one, uh, one bit there, and, um, and just wanna emphasize, re-emphasize, and emphasize some more. Um, register your bike at bikeindex.org. Um, sign up on Facebook with Stolen Bikes NOLA and, um, and follow the rear wheel, the rear triangle locking method for your bike. Um, you, you don't have to have a, you, 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 there's no such thing as a bike that can't be stolen. But you have to make it where it's worth, where it's not worth it, where it's just so hard to steal that it's not worth it for the thief. So lock up that rear wheel rear wheel method, I posted the link to that, and that's really gonna improve your chances of not getting your bike bothered. And that's it for Clark, signing off. Awesome. Um, do any of the folks that maybe joined a little late wanna introduce themselves? Um, uh, I'm Marion Moore. Um, have a messy room, so that's why I'm hiding. <laughs> um, I just signed in because I don't get off work until 5.30 and I didn't know what time this, this started. So uh, that's why I sent the question. Is I see that you're recording. Is it gonna be available later? Yes, yeah, so um, yeah, this is our very first time doing a virtual workshop. So we're just kind of testing things out, but we are gonna, we have recorded this um, and we will, um, we're going to probably post it as a blog post on the Bike Easy website. Um, okay. We'll probably be doing it again, maybe in, a, in another month. And then also, um, all of y'all should be following Bike Easy on social media because we're going to offer, in addition to part two of this tomorrow, when we're going to be covering um, the rules of the road, um, communicating hazards. Um, in addition to that, tomorrow, um, every Saturday, for the first three weeks of April, we're gonna be offering some smaller online workshops. We're gonna offer um, a maintenance specific workshop. We're gonna cover the stuff that we covered today, baby seat quick check, um, but go a little bit more in depth and also cover fixing a flat. Um, and then we're gonna have one specifically on the rules of the road and another um, online workshop about um, bike infrastructure. Um, so keep following Bike Easy's social media um, and you can, you can join in for those as well. Thanks. Any other folks that join late want to introduce themselves? Yeah, hey, uh, Here we all. Adam. Uh, I'm <clears throat> out in Denver, Colorado these days. I uh, just thought I'd stop in and stop by. You, you know, I've taken this class before, but always good info and things like that. So, hi, everybody. Awesome. And my name is Mike. Uh, I live in Gonzales. So for me to ride someplace safely, I have to get in the car and drive either to Baton Rouge or maybe to Kenner. That's probably the closest. Uh, but I've been riding for about two years and I really enjoy it. So uh, sorry I was late. Um, like somebody else said, got off, of, got off of work late and joined as soon as I could. So thank you all for doing this. It's really helpful. Um, and I hope I can see y'all on the road somewhere. Awesome. Well, thank y'all so much for, you know, being guinea pigs at our first ever uh, virtual workshop. You know, clearly we could do some more things to make it more efficient, but 
Um, definitely look forward to hopefully seeing you guys all again tomorrow when we're going to get into uh, the exciting topic of the rules of the road and how to feel confident navigating uh, in any road situation. Um, so hope to see you guys tomorrow. It's going to be same Zoom link tomorrow, same time, um, 5.30. Um, so I hope to see you guys there and feel free to reach out um, to me if you guys have any questions. I posted the link to the feedback survey um, if you want to fill that out as well. Um, and then if you, you know, if you can't make the one tomorrow, we'll be again posting a video, but hope, hoping that you can make it live. Um, and I, also, if you're interested in, in learning more about becoming a league cycling instructor, um, this is the prereq, part of the prerequisite class for that. And if you look on the League of American Bicyclists website, you can learn um, more information about, about becoming an instructor as well. Mark, can you talk a little bit more about getting the kids involved? You talking about kids and teachers and that kind of thing? Yeah, sure. Um, what I've done is, um, you know, just from just from already being, a, you know, I'm a, I'm a parent of two kids at Audubon Charter, and so involved in the PTO there. So it started out just um, just by going and um, now the way the Live to Ride is set up is we can't register people under 18. David, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe that kid, that there's liability issues there, and they don't want people under 18 signing up. Um, I think it's 15, actually, but I'll 15. double check that. Okay. Okay, so we can get high school kids, but what I'm working with is grammar school kids. And, um, and so, but what I have done is, um, is I've made a group within, the, uh, within the, the Bike Easy Challenge just for the school. And then with that, I've gone and really recruited a lot of, a lot of teachers to sign up. And then really push the parents and faculty to uh, to sign up. So I went and got the administration to sign up there, and then we pushed it over to um, to a few other schools. We got the Say Francais involved, and um, I think last year we got McGee involved also. And um, but just going and just just challenging other parents um, that are involved said, hey, why don't you go and sign up? Don't sign up for you because you know you're not going to get a great turnout at your particular workplace. Um, but why don't you sign up through the school and start pushing other parents to ride, ride their kids to school. And yeah, the kids don't actually get credit for riding, but the parents do. So, um, so score the points for the, for the team with the parents. And, um, and we were actually doing, uh, with Audubon Charter, I was doing weekly updates where, um, you know, the, the faculty have a weekly newsletter that they send out to all the parents. And so I would write a little blurb every week and let them know, like, oh, this week, um, you know, our best rider was, uh, was uh, Monsieur Locke, and, um, and he rode uh, 304 miles this week. And, um, and then encourage everybody that so and so got on their bike for the first time in so many years, just write a little blurb every week, encouraging more people to get out there on their bikes. And, um, and we did remarkably well. Um, you know, we got... Um, Actually, we had about four people in our school that um, that ended up going and riding every day, every single day for the whole challenge, and um, rain or shine, and um, and got a lot of miles and a lot of points. But where, like I said before, where we really scored the points was um, was that I had another, I want to say, forty other parents and faculty that all got out there and rode tw rode twenty miles or so. And just the fact that they hadn't ridden in years and they got on their bikes and rode, we scored enough points that, um, that we were just barely behind Energy Corporation um, at the end of the thing. So we got fourth place in the city, but um, that we finished behind the city of New Orleans. We finished behind Intergy and, um, oh, and we finished behind Tulane University. But, um, but so just pushing it like that, pushing it with the, uh, and you know, we're not, not a huge school. But, um, but we're able to do that and really encourage, um, especially the people that don't ride, to get out and ride. You can really get some points that way. And, um, and it's a ton of fun. Yeah, and um, Karen and anybody else that's interested, um, you know, I mean, 
Clark takes on things like himself and is very personable, but um, if you sign up as a champion for your organization um, or workplace, you know, um, we do because of these times, we're making it much more organization based. So that can be people, you know, like outside of a work environment. Um, you know, obviously Clark said he organized the PTO at Audubon. Um, but if you sign up as a champion, you'll get a lot of like resources from us. It's like drafted emails, you know, um, like images and stuff like that to share out and just like ideas on how to promote biking to your group. Um, and also wanted to say that this year, you know, like we love the competition nature of it, but again, with like things being uncertain and just wanting to give like a lot more fair shakes, um, we'll be doing every like leader in different categories is going to get like plaque acknowledgement and, you know, like some other like, um, like basically way of promoting them. But, um, we're going to take like top winners or, you know, like, uh, the top three or four or five people in each category, individuals or groups and do like random prize drawings. Um, and it's a lot more this year about like participating and getting in random prize drawings. So like random prize drawings throughout the week or throughout the month that you can like, you know, be entered in automatically if you log a ride or you can participate in like our social media or email, you know, to, like let us know you're interested in that prize drawing. Um, so yeah, just trying to make it like more that everybody can participate while still, or you know, everybody has a chance to win while still like promoting the competition aspect of it too. One of the other things that I wanted to add about the challenge is uh, this year because of what's going on, we're really gonna try to push using uh, the Love to Ride virtual platform to less. Uh, one of our goals is to create this uh, virtual community of riders. You know, again, we're encourage encouraging people to do solo rides or if you're riding with someone, that someone should be a person that you're living with or you're quarantining with, uh, you know, for safety. But, uh, you know, this year had this very ambitious plan of doing a lot of in-person uh, events in the city, kind of small interventions to just encourage people. So, you know, now we're using all the te technology tools that we can. If you guys have any ideas, just feel free um, to let us know. Uh, one of the things that we're going to be introducing in the next week or so uh, is uh, a gift card drive. Uh, you know, we know a lot of businesses that are closed right now and they're relying on the purchase of gift cards for their businesses to continue paying their employees. So we're going to be um, promoting a gift card uh, drive where you, you're able to purchase a gift certificate for a restaurant or you know an establish, establishment that might be closed right now and, and then donate that as one of the prizes for the biking challenge so it's, it's you know it's kind of giving back to the community so we are really trying to get really creative in how we're approaching the challenge this year so anybody who wants to john just do it and encourage your friends uh, should be really fun Awesome. Well, thank you all so much for joining us for our first ever uh, virtual workshop. So stay tuned for lots more um, like this. Um, in, please join us for tomorrow evening when we get into the nitty gritty of navigating the roadways. And hopefully we'll be offering um, the same class again, perhaps in a month. Um, so tell your friends and hope to see you guys uh, riding out on the street from a safe distance. Yeah. Um, and please reach out to me if you have any questions about writing, bike easy, uh, anything. So thank you all so much. Hope everyone has a lovely evening. You too. Thank you all.